So essentially these tabs will make alignment a lot easier because it's setting it almost to the ideal spec for whatever setup you're putting it on, but then again, it locks it out so I can go and jump the van. No, no, no. I can go send it off a cliff and the alignment should stay fine. Joking a little bit about that. Do not, <laughs> please. Take your van off your a van. jump. I'm gonna jump this thing. Not fixing it. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I'm not jumping it. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today I'm in Montrose, Colorado at Adrenaline Vans, hanging out with my buddy Tim over here, and we are getting the Psy Mode Storyteller ready for some more adventures this year. Somebody tires. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> the van falls off the lift. So we're here getting the van ready for about two and a half Fine, weeks I'm on the road. <laughs> down to Arizona, but more importantly, Alaska. I'm going to take the van to Alaska for the entire month of June. We're leaving May 29th, I believe, and we'll be getting back around July 1st. So I came out here on my way down to Arizona, that way we could do some routine maintenance kind of things, and that all started with tires. If you guys caught my last video talking about the Tundra, you will have already known that Firestone has come on board as a partner for basically all of the rubber on my vehicles that you guys see here on the channel. Now the tires that were on my van had probably about 20,000 miles on them and it was the perfect time to swap them out. Recently I've been having some issues in the snow. I got the van stuck, luckily did a self recovery. There was no video on that, but this is essentially what it looked like right here. So I winched myself out of that situation and I decided when picking new tires for this thing, I wanted something with an actual snowflake rating. Now with the Tundra, I ended up going with the MT2s, which is a pretty aggressive tire, a little too aggressive for something like the van. And since the van is really on the road most of the time, it does get off road a lot, but I'm putting in a ton of miles on pavement across the country. I decided to stick with their destination line, which is good for off-roading, but instead of the MTs, I went to the XTs. So like I mentioned, this thing has the three peak mountain snowflake rating, which in layman's terms means that it's better in the snow than a tire that does not have that rating. Some all-terrain tires have that, some of them don't. These happen to, and it's gonna be great for the winter time. We're cutting the tech talk right here. Tech talk? Tech talk. You we're want to talk tech, tech? tech? Hey, we're doing tech talk. <laughs> bring the tire in over bring, here. Bring me the damn tire. All right, hold this as I talk about it. <laughs> tech talk. Why do you want a three peak mountain snowflake and what does it mean, right? Are you going to talk about I'm it? I'm talking. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm taking over. Yeah. Why? What does it mean? Sights. It, basically, in order to meet that rating, the tire has to perform well in snowy, wet conditions. It would make sense. What allows a tire to perform well has a lot to do with the tread block design, the layout, and the siping. And I am by no means a tire expert, but I've driven a lot of different tires on a lot of different vehicles. And I can tell you that something with that three peak mountain snowflake rating makes a huge difference in the snow. And a lot of that is due to the tread blocks and the siping. So you can see all of these sharp edges on this tire. There's a lot of smaller blocks, with a lot of sharp edges. All of the edges are what give you that traction in the snow and in the ice and the slippery conditions. And then these little grooves here in the middle, you can see it's, it's like a cut, right? So all the little grooves in the middle here is a cut. That's called siping. And not only are these tires siped with just straight siping in, the, in some of the tread blocks, they also have you know, this jagged edge type siping in the middle there where the majority of your contact patch is. As the tire is going down the road with the weight of the van on it, that contact patch that's touching the road surface has all of these sharp edges, not just at the edge of the tread block, but also within the tread block at each siped cut there. That's what gives you the traction in the snow. You'll see a lot of big uh, mud train tires are gonna have huge lugs with lots of space in between to clear the mud out, to allow it to bite into the mud and fling it off the other way. Whereas a three peak mountain snowflake rated tire is gonna have a closer spacing between the tread blocks a lot more siping. You know, it looks aggressive, kind of like an all-terrain tire, but the tread blocks are a little closer together like you would expect to see on a highway type tire. That's what's important about living in Colorado, you want that three peak mountain snowflake rating. Dude, I've said that like 12 times. I think we get a bonus, we get a spiff every time we say that. Yeah. Right? Tech talk from Tim here. Yeah, tech talk, I'm out. So Sorry. hopefully you guys learned some stuff about that. The extra siping moves water and stuff like that away from the tire. And I think this is probably gonna be pretty good for me because it's not overly aggressive. It's gonna be good on road. It's gonna be great off road. And just like I said in the last video, after I get some miles on these things, really sometime this week probably, 
I'm gonna have like probably close to 2,500 miles after this week. Dang. I will give you guys my full impressions on those. Now, instead of having Tim hold the tire to explain this next part, I'm just gonna bring it over to him. I could hold the tire, dude. It's not a big <laughs> you can hold it. I got it. So you guys know that I was previously running these Apex valves, and with the Al Talon wheel, I found that it was a little bit close to actually pull this activation valve over here. If you haven't seen these, it's a quick dump valve, so you can let a ton of air out of your tire much faster than using like a quick deflator or something like that. So when we were putting the new tires on these wheels, we actually put a longer version on here so I can actually get my finger behind the pull tab, making that a lot more useful than it was before. And since the Owl Talon has the ability to have a second valve on here, Tim suggested these also from Apex. This is the RIV, Rapid Inflate Valve, and this is the RPV, which is obviously your quick deflate. Both of these are the XL versions. They're the extended length. For any of these wheels that have an offset similar to this where there's a deep groove kind of here in the corner, that gives you the extra length on the stem, inflate and deflate, in order to get your attachments on there to easily access the valve itself. Now you do have to watch out. This does now stick out a little bit further. So if you had a, a really narrow tire and this was the furthest point out, I would be wary of that. But in this case, it makes it way easier to reach the valve to actually dump the pressure. So this is a quick deflate, this is a quick inflate. So I actually took my faster flate valves and put a different adapter on there. Tim has done a full video on how these things function compared to stock. So if you guys wanna see how quick you can dump the air and then also put air back into the tire, I'll leave a link for his video that he made. Down below. And over, over that way. There. Yeah, over here. Now the last thing, I shouldn't even say the last thing because I'm sure we're gonna be doing a lot more, but the other thing that we've been working on, you guys probably saw the install of the Van Compass rally struts the last time I was out here, which was a couple months ago now. I think honestly four, three, four months ago now. And it's been winter the whole time, so I really haven't been able to test these a whole lot, but we got everything in and dialed, and now that we're going south, I'm definitely gonna be able to put these things to the test. We did the whole install video. You guys can check that video out too at the link up there in the corner. And we set the alignment and everything has been great so far. Again, no real aggressive driving, but Tim developed something new, which will basically lock the camber adjustment. And again, we're getting into like tech talk here, so I don't wanna bore you guys too much, but I'll give you like a brief rundown. So now when we're talking about camber adjustment or just alignment adjustment in general, when you're talking about camber, you're talking about the tire in this orientation, toe, you're talking about it in this orientation, and then caster, which doesn't really matter in this case, is the wheel position in line with the wheel well essentially. You have to have all this stuff aligned perfectly, that way your tires wear evenly, you don't get any weird road shakes and stuff like that. So with a van this heavy, as you are setting the camber adjustment, obviously there's a ton of weight coming down, so it wants the tire to kind of like squish in, giving you negative camber. And we're not camber gang up in here. So, Tim developed something new here and he can kind of give you a tech rundown of it. Yeah, come take a look. Here's a rally strut in place on Talon's van. Here's one just sitting on the side. You can see this bottom hole here is slotted. That's to allow for adjustment of camber, which Talon just talked about. The angle here of your hub. It's important to set that angle properly. It's also important for it to be able to hold in place properly. And what we've developed is uh, a camber lockout tab. These are billet 70, 75 aircraft grade aluminum. We will have these uh, anodized when we go to full production with these, but for right now, we've just done a couple of uh, prototype runs. So we machine these here in house. And what this tab does is slots into the slot on the strut and then prevents that camber adjustment from moving past the dimension that we've machined in here. We've done a lot of R&D to develop a very specific width of the tab, which correlates to a specific angle of the strut. And that of course changes with each variant of van and the final camber angle that is desired. So for example, on a lifted van like Talon's, this <laughs> this tab is going to be a different thickness than on a van say with just a 4.3 kit and the rally strut because his set point on the top of the strut is at a different place which also changes your camera angle. So without getting too into the weeds on all of the technical details, what these tabs do 
is for shops that don't have access to an alignment rack to check their stuff. It allows them to take these tabs and say, hey, I've got a 6.3 van, it's a 2500, so we're gonna align it to those specs. Which tab do I need? I send you a set of these tabs. When you put the strut in, you simply set the tab in place, run your bolt through, torque them to spec, and at least at that point, your camber is where it needs to be or very close to it. I will always, always recommend an alignment after any time that you're installing a suspension component, but at least this gets people in the right direction and gives you a baseline. So many shops out there are not aligning vehicles and they're not setting these to any specific angle and they come into our shop and we have all kinds of crazy scenarios that we've seen with camber way off, toe, alignments just really screwed up, tires worn out um, prematurely. So I wanted to develop something that would allow any shop installing these struts to at least get a very close baseline going out the door. So that's what these do. And secondly, when you have this in place and you have everything torqued up, it will prevent <laughs> it will prevent you from hitting a curb or a rock or something like that off-road and actually moving your camera angle because that bolt is up against the stop. You'd really have to hit something super, super hard in order to change that angle. What I've seen in the past as well is people will have their alignment done, their camber set, and then they'll go hit a big pothole or go do some off-road riding. And basically that adjustment will move because there's only, there's a finite amount of force with which these tabs can squeeze the knuckle. And that's just kind of the nature of this setup. So that the tab allows for extra support to keep it from moving, much like a camber bolt would in an OE strut scenario. Sorry for getting in the weeds on that. No, that's but good, that's, that's good. Got. So essentially these tabs will make alignment a lot easier because it's setting it almost to the ideal spec for whatever setup you're putting it on, but then again, it locks it out so I can go and jump the van. No, no, no. I can go send it off a cliff and the alignment should stay fine. Joking a little bit about that. Do not. <laughs> Please take your van jump off your a van. jump. I'm gonna jump this thing. Not fixing it. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I'm not jumping it. So we're gonna work on getting this all back together. We already cleaned up the brakes and I think the van is pretty much set for our trip to Arizona and probably to Alaska too. That's a lot of tech talk. Let's do some Sorry. fun stuff. Oh. What is this? Hello. <laughs> That's the new toy. So Tim got the new Ineos Grenadier, and we're going to be filming a full walk around video of this guy over on his channel, so you guys can see that. He also has another one over here from Andreas at RRE Global, which is getting some goodies. Now, I have not really talked about the Grenadier all that much, but if you guys are interested in these things, I think we're just gonna cut to some fun footage of us testing out Tim's, but if you want the in-depth, nitty-gritty, walk-around stuff of this thing, you can check that out on his channel sometime soon. Can we jump this? Yeah, we can definitely jump <laughs> All <this>. right. <laughs>
Hey guys, it's about one o'clock in the morning right now and I'm all the way down in Mesa, Arizona, just outside of Al Van's headquarters. Some of my friends are asleep right now because we're all here on our vans and the open house is tomorrow morning, right when this video goes live. It's gonna be from 4 p.m. until about 9 p.m. There's a lot of cool stuff going on and hopefully I get to see some of you guys there. I forgot to film an outro for this video, which is why I'm editing this so late at night while I'm on the road, just sitting in my van. But I wanted to give a huge thank you to Tim and the whole crew at Adrenaline Vans. I trust them so much with working on my storyteller, the side mode, because they are just so good at everything that they do. We got this thing dialed in, everything that you guys saw in the video, but also I got a new windshield because that thing was all cracked and rock chipped and destroyed. They are hands down one of the best shops in that entire area. And if you guys are looking to do anything like general maintenance or also upfitting your van, check them out, link in the description down below. Now I also wanted to kind of give my thoughts on the Grenadier because that's something that I have not talked about on my channel before and to be honest I've only seen them in person like up close a few times but I see them all over Colorado right now which is kind of crazy because it's a very new vehicle. It's a British car but German design and they're built in France so there's like a lot of weird stuff going on there. They're new to the United States and I had mixed feelings about them, but after checking out Tim's and Andreas's from RRE Global, I'm obviously not an SUV guy and I prefer trucks and vans, but also if I ever decided to get into kind of the SUV thing, that might be at the top of my list right now. So I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on it. Have you heard about the Grenadier? Have you heard about Ineos in general? Maybe you're from Europe and you've heard about some of the vehicles driving around. Maybe you own one already, who knows? It's a really capable vehicle with a lot of analog design, which you guys have probably heard me talk about before. I absolutely love that stuff. A lot of manual switches on the inside. It has a front, rear, and center lock. There's obviously a lot of aftermarket support for them because the vehicles are new to the States, but everything is already being imported from Germany and overseas. So these things are going to be pretty cool and I'm seeing them more and more and it's got my interest peaked. So if you're at the Alvans open house, both Tim's Grenadier and the other black Grenadier that you saw will be here tomorrow. So maybe you'll be able to see it today. If not, I'm curious if you guys have seen them before, are you interested in them, and would you like to see me give my thoughts and impressions of driving with it, overlanding with it, general drive around like daily kind of car impressions with it? Would you guys like to see a video on it? If you would, let me know in the comments down below. Just like with the Tundra, I asked you guys on my channel, would you like to see a fourth gen Tacoma or a third gen Tundra? A majority voted to see the Tundra, which is why that's kind of my current big project that's going on right now. My plan right now is to still get the Tacoma. I'm selling my third gen, gonna pick up the fourth gen, and this is probably a long shot, but if you guys would like to see me get into something else like an Ineos Grenadier or maybe as of today when I'm filming this, Toyota just released the new 4Runner. If you'd like to see me get into something completely different outside of my norm, let me know in the comments down below. Send me a DM, drop a comment on Instagram. Let me know what you guys actually wanna see because I'm obviously making these videos for you guys. So that's all that I had for today. Hopefully I'm not waking up my friends behind me here. And hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow. We've got a ton of van events down here in Arizona and I'm hoping I run into you guys. I think we're gonna fire up the vlog in the next one. So if you're interested in overlanding, living on the road, this kind of content, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.